Hey there Z Fighters, welcome back to the channel. This is Poohhead189, and this time we're going to be discussing how to judge canon in the Dragon Ball franchise. Dragon Ball has always been confusing on what is and isn't canon for many fans, and this video is a comprehensive guide on how to judge what you can trust to help you in any Dragon Ball debates or discussions you might have. You also need to note that gauging Dragon Ball Super canon is different than previous installments of the series. We'll get to Dragon Ball Super at the end, but for now let's discuss the original. Now when it comes to Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z, there's four tiers of canon. The lowest form of canon, and most serious fans would consider it generally just non-canon and you don't ever discuss it, is anime canon, because of the dubs and subs, liberties, and lack of accuracy when portraying the manga, as well as all of the filler episodes, arcs like the Garlic Jr. Saga and GT as a whole, you can never fully trust the anime. It has little to no influence by Akira Toriyama, though he has been known to work on the art of various episodes, and those episodes he did work on I would give a slight edge when it comes to canonicity, or at least plausibility of it being somewhat canon, but still, even with that, you never use quotes or scenes in the anime to discuss Dragon Ball unless you have already agreed to have an anime-only discussion. Now that's not to say the anime is inherently bad. The anime has the largest fan base and popularity. This is simply discussing canonicity. The next tier, or the third tier, are the Daizenshu source books. There are ten in all, with seven hardcover books and three softcover supplemental volumes. There's plenty of information about the books, but this video is on canon, and these books are mostly good for filling in the dots of certain plot points and questions one might have after reading the manga. Toriyama only had minimal involvement with the creation of these books, however the authors worked extensively with him over the years and he has given the books his blessing. I'll quote Toriyama here about the last of the hardcover volumes in 1996. This Daizenshu, the seventh and final one, is a huge Dragon Ball encyclopedia. I think the staff who make these books always have a rough time of it, but this one looked even more hellish than usual. They really did a great job. I'm ridiculously forgetful, so despite being the author, there is a lot of stuff even I do not know anymore. It was often quite a nuisance, and I think having this encyclopedia around when the series was still running would have been really helpful to me. Darn it all. Anyway, my thanks to the staff and to all Dragon Ball fans. And now to the man himself. The next tier of canon one can use are interviews of Akira Toriyama. While yes, he is notoriously forgetful of his own past works, nonetheless he does keep notes and obviously many record his interviews where he discusses characters, plots, and timelines. As the creator of the series, he has quite a bit of say in certain aspects of the franchise, even today during his hands-off years. Plus, many of the interviews that he has were during his time making the manga. However, even Toriyama cannot override the canon in its purest form, which is what we know as the manga. As the official recognized and published primary source material, the manga is the Dragon Ball series. If you have an argument or discussion, quote the manga or use panels to show various Super Saiyan forms or what have you. Again, this is the series as it truly is. Toriyama is the creator, but he couldn't, say, tell us that the Saiyan Saga happened after the Android Saga, or that Vegeta's Super Saiyan power level was 50,000, or that Future Trunks wasn't really from the future. These just aren't true from what is known in the source material. The manga is the series, and in that case, what is true in the manga is true in every other aspect. Now, on to Dragon Ball Super. Super is a bit of an oddity, because Toriyama has only a secondary or even tertiary role when it comes to creating either the anime or the manga, so generally, they are both as canon as one another. As are the new movies, in a fashion. However, as the main artist of the new manga is the successor of Toriyama, Toyotaro, one could make an argument that the super manga is more canon by proxy, but I am not one of the people who just subscribe to that group of thinkers. So, I hope that helps you shed some light on the most confusing and hotly debated topics of Dragon Ball. Stay tuned for my next video when I'll be comparing Earthlings and Saiyans in the Dragon Ball universe. Thanks guys!